Hello students, let's start with our next lecture from the unit number 3 and uh, as all of you know we are discussing about the semantic analysis and the SGT. Last time we have discussed the different types of the attributes okay and with the example we have studied that and also we have proved how the semantic analyzer do the type checking and how the values of the attributes are get evaluated with the help of the two different techniques. Now today we are going to discuss about the comparison of uh, different types of the attributes means we will discuss about the comparison between the synthesized attribute and the inherited attribute then we will discuss about the dependency graph then types of the SGT and comparison of the SGT these different points today we will discuss. So this is the comparison between the synthesized attributes and the inherited attributes that already last time we have studied. So with the help of the different key points, we have done the comparison here. Okay, you can see according to these key points, we will compare the synthesized attribute and the inherited attributes. Now, as as you, if you remember the previous uh, lecture, in that we have already seen this uh, with examples like synthesized attribute is nothing but the attribute whose uh, parse tree node value is determined by attribute value at the child node. Means the attribute whose value is being calculated with the help of the child node, that attributes are referred as a synthesis attribute. So, that example we can also see here. Suppose you have the production S derived ABC, and if here S is taking value from the child node a or b or c then it is said to be means s is said to be the synthesized attribute as the values of the abcs are synthesized to the s okay this is the synthesis attribute now on the other hand as a opposite to the synthesized there is a inherited attribute and inherited attribute is said to be the inherited at, a particular attribute is said to be the inherited attribute if it is parse tree node value is being determined with the help of the attribute value of parent node or sibling nodes. If the particular attribute values are evaluated with the help of its parent node or with the help of its sibling, then that particular attribute is referred as the inherited attribute. Now suppose if we have the example like this, S deriving the ABC, now if A is taking the value or if B is getting the value from S, B, C. Now, S is a, uh, uh, if you see, S is a parent of A. Okay. Then B and C are the siblings of the A. So, if A can get the value from S, B, C, or B can, if the B can take the value from, now if B can take the value from S or A or C, likewise, if C can take the value from S, A, B, then S is said to be the inherited attribute. Yes, is said to be what? Inherited attribute because yes is considered as a parent here and it is taking the value from its, its uh, what we can say, uh, uh, if the particular node or particular attribute taking the value from its parents or the sibling, then in case of that, that particular attribute is referred as an inherited attribute. Okay, so in this case, you can see the if uh, a is taking the value from s or b or c then a is said to be the inherited attribute okay if b is taking the value from a c or s then b will be considered as an inherited attribute and if c is taking the value from a b or s then c will be considered as a inherited attributes okay so in this way uh, the first difference you can see here if the particular node is taking a uh, node attribute value is being calculated with the help of the parent or sibling nodes, then that particular attribute is referred as the inherited attributes. Okay. Now let's see the comparison uh, with respect to the design. Okay. So uh, you can see in case of the synthesis attributes, the production must have the non terminal at its head. Okay. The particular production must have the non terminal as a root or as a head okay on the other uh, in uh, other in case of the inherited attribute the production must have the non terminal as a symbol in its body okay 
so here the non terminal must be present as a head here the non terminal can be present in, even if the non terminal present in the body also then uh, there is a uh, no matter in case of the inherited attributes okay so there is a necessity in case one necessity uh, as a purpose of design in case of the synthesis attribute is what necessity is what the production must have a non terminal as a head okay and here necessity is what the production must have the non terminal symbol present in the body of that particular production of the gram okay then uh, for the evaluation purpose synthesis attribute can be evaluated during the single bottom up parsing means if you want to evaluate the values of the attribute so in case of the synthesis attribute the traversing has to be performed in the bottom up fashion while in case of the inherited attribute the traversing has can be performed in the top down sideways traversal of the parse tree it is being also referred as a pre order traversing in case of the inherited attribute then uh, in case of the synthesis attribute both the terminal and the non terminals can contain the synthesized attributes okay so here in case of the synthesis attribute uh, for the terminal also or for the non terminal also the synthesis attribute uh, is present can be there okay but in case of the inherited attributes only the non terminal contains the inherited attributes here both the terminal as well as the non terminal contain the synthesis attributes in case of these only the non terminal contain the inherited attributes okay then uh, another main difference is there in case of the sdt synthesis attribute is used by the both s attributed sdt as well as the l attributed sdt okay what synthesis attribute is utilized by s attributed sdt as well as the l attributed sdt now next point we are going to discuss what is mean by the uh, s attributed sdt and the l attributed sdt here you you just keep in mind synthesized attribute is used by the both the types of the sdt both the type in the sense s attributed sdt as well as the l attributed sdt but inherited attribute is used by only the l attributed sdt okay so these are the difference uh, uh, we can see here and as a example also we, we can see here uh, I, i as you can see synthesized attributes taking the value from child here so this e is considered as a synthesis attribute as it is taking the value from the child now here ap is considered as a inherited attribute because it is taking the value from the parent so that's this this is the about all thing about the difference between the synthesis attribute and the inherited attributes so second point that we are going to discuss that is the dependency graph okay now uh, dependency graph is very simple concept uh, you can easily understand this so uh, for what purpose actually the dependency graph is utilized so main purpose behind utilization of uh, dependency graph is it shows the flow of information among the attribute instances in particular annotated parse tree so for our, for what purpose it is utilized to show the flow of information understood to just show the flow of information uh, among the attribute instances in the particular annotated parse tree we'll see that okay in the example also so an edge from one attribute instance to another means that value of first is needed to compute the second okay so here i have shown the one uh, example of dependency graph now you can see in this graph there are the some dotted lines are there as well as some uh, solid lines are there these are the dotted lines okay these are the dotted lines you can see these are the solid lines okay what is the use of these dotted lines and the solid lines so dotted lines uh, dotted lines indicate the particular parse tree okay and this solid lines solid lines indicate the dependency now what 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 exactly meaning of this particular part now here you can see to this e dot value this dot solid lines arrow is being shown now this solid line arrow show indicates if you want to evaluate the value of e1 dot value you have to evaluate the value of e1 that value plus uh, sorry into e2 that value means it indicate value of this node value of attribute of this node it depends on this node and this node understood means this node is depend on this particular node and this particular again this particular node attribute value is depend on this node and 
this node. That is the reason solid line arrow is shown to this particular node. Understood. So that is the thing I have mentioned here. An edge from one attribute instance to the another indicate what value of first is needed to compute the second. Means arrow is being shown from this particular point to this point, which indicate what. If you want to evaluate the value of these, then you should first evaluate the value of e1 dot value first. These arrow also indicate the same. If you want to evaluate the e1 dot value here, you should first evaluate this e2 dot value. Understood. So this is nothing but the an edge from one attribute instance to another means the value of first means value of this needed to compute the value of second means if you want to evaluate this e1 dot value you have to evaluate this e1 dot value as well as e2 dot value. Understood. So solid line uh, uh, arrow shows the dependency whereas the dotted line shows the first. Okay. so we can also describe it in another way it is a directed graph that represent the interdependency between the attribute at a node in the past so it is a kind of directed graph which shows what dependency between the attributes of the node means attribute value of this node is depend on this node and this node that is being shown here with the help of the direction of this arrow as well as attribute value of this node depends on this node and the this node that is being shown by this solid line arrow okay so this is that is the reason it is being also referred as a directed graph okay for example if you have the rule x derives y z then uh, you can write the semantic action for that like for example x dot x derives y dot y and the z dot small z okay so here it simply means that x dot x is depend on the values of y dot y and the z dot z understood it is simply means that so here i have written then the synthesis attribute x dot x depend on attribute value of y dot y and the z dot z okay so that is the dependency graph so here sample example also i have shown uh, design the dependency graph for the following okay this is the grammar we have given okay and to that grammar we have added some semantic rules original grammar given as e derives e1 plus e2 and then you write the semantic rule for that e1 dot e dot value derives e1 dot value plus e2 dot value and similar here uh, e derives e1 into e2 its semantic rule is e dot value derives e1 dot value into the e2 dot value okay so here again uh, in the simple way i have the same uh, dependency graph we have the arrow from e1 and e2 shows that the arrow from e1 and this e2 shows that value of e depends on e1 and the e2 same here also the arrow from e1 and the e2 this arrow okay and these arrows simply indicates what the value of e depends on e1 and e2 so so that is the solid line arrows so dependency is so shown by the solid arrows okay and dotted line shows the past okay so that is all about the dependency graph which simply utilized to describe which attribute value uh, attribute value of which node depends on which other nodes okay and how the information is flowing from one node to the another node in order to show that graphically there is a utilization of the dependency graph okay now let's see the uh, next type next uh, content that is the type of the sdp now already before this already we have studied what exactly mean by the sdp so sdp stands for the syntax directed translation okay and what exactly it is that is nothing but the original grammar plus added semantic rules and from that uh, newly generated sdd syntax directed definition uh, we generate the annotated parse tree and then we traverse that annotated parse tree for the purpose of computing the values of the attributes and then we'll check whether the particular expression is correct or not if the annotated parse is getting generated correctly and the, all the attribute will get value this whole process is referred as a syntax directed translation so there are the two main types of that syntax directed translation okay in that first one is the s attributed sdt and second type is l attributed sdt okay first type is what s attributed sdt and second is l attributed sdt now first we understand what exactly mean by the s attributed sdt okay let's see here i have mentioned 
if an sdt uses only synthesized attribute what if syntax directory translation only utilize which kind of attribute only the synthesized attribute then it is called as a s attributed sdt means there is a uh, sdt which is having only the synthesized attribute synthesized attribute in the sense where the values of the parent can be evaluated with the help of the child if that if the sdt is like that only where is where there is a presence of synthesized attribute only then particular that sdt is called as a s attributed sdt so here as you know the synthesized attribute how we evaluate the synthesized attribute in the bottom of cache so is this s attributed sdt are evaluated in the bottom of fashion in the bottom of parsing as the values of the parent node are depend on the values of the child node. so that property of the synthesized attribute is applicable to the s attributed sdt okay another thing related with the synthesize in, in related to the s attributed sdt is what semantic actions are placed in the rightmost place of the right hand side means for example if you have the grammar like this e derives e plus p now for this semantic action is being written on the right hand side like this now for this for this production semantic action is like this e, e dot value equal to e, e dot value plus p dot value so semantic action are always right on the rightmost side in case of the s attributed sdt okay so keep these things in mind semantic action are placed in the rightmost place of the rhs so this is the semantic action uh, written for the production of the grammar like this e derives e plus p okay and if you have to write the semantic action in case of the s attributed sdt it should be written like this only only where on the rightmost side of the right where on the rightmost place of the rhs okay where on the rightmost place of the right hand side so this is your right hand side and you have to write the semantic action on the rightmost side like this okay so this is all about the uh, our uh, s attributed sdt where there is a presence of only synthesized attribute the same thing also shown in the diagram also you can see this e values depends on this e and this p that's why the arrow you can see here plus and uh, the dotted arrow indicates the uh, parsed okay like this now so this is all about the s attributed sdt so in case of the s attributed sdt you have to keep in mind what the if the if the particular sdt contain only the synthesis attribute then that a particular sdt is called as what s attributed sdt okay let's see the second type there second type is the l attributed sdt what l attributed sdt if an sdt uses both synthesized attribute as well as inherited attributes with the restriction that inherited attribute can inherit the value from left sibling only then it is called as a l attributed sdt now as compared with the s attributed sdt s attributed sdt contains only what synthesized attributes but l attributed sdt is containing both synthesized attribute as well as the inherited attribute but it containing the inherited attribute with restriction what restriction is what the in restriction here is what inherited attribute can inherit value only from the left sibling only that is the restriction okay so that is the difference here so attributes in l attribute sdt are evaluated in the depth for such depth to right parsing manner means in the top down manner or you can say in the pre ordered traverse okay another important difference semantic action are placed anywhere in the right hand side but you can see in case of the uh, s attributed sdt we have seen semantic actions are placed only where only on the rightmost side of the rhs but here in case of the la attributed sdt semantic action can be placed anywhere on the right hand side not just on the rightmost end of the rhs but anywhere on the right hand side the semantic action can be written so that is the this is the thing about the la attributed sdt so we have to simply keep mind keep in mind the difference we have seen previous to this s attributed sdt which contain only the synthesized attribute but this la attributed sdt contain one contains only what both the kind of attribute both in the sense it also contain the synthesized attribute also it contain the inherited attribute with some 
restriction and restriction is what the innate attribute can inherit value only from the left siblings one thing okay so that is called as a l attribute sg okay now let's see the example here now this is the example a derives x y z this is our original grammar okay and for that the semantic actions are written like this where y dot s equal to a dot s means y can take the value from y can take the value from a okay then y dot s equal to the x dot s y can take the value from x also then y dot s equal to the z dot s y can take the value from z dot s because here y is what y is considered as a sibling for the z okay so so you can see here what is the problem here now this is correct this is also correct but y dot now you can see y dot uh, let's let's see y dot s equal to the a dot s means y is taking the value from a okay it is correct y is taking the value from a a is what a is the parent of y okay it is okay this is correct then y dot s is taking the value from x y is taking the value from x so x is what left sibling of the y this is also correct but y dot s equal to the z dot s is not correct y dot because here what is the meaning of this y is taking the value from z so z is the right sibling of the y and that violate the l attributed sgt definition because what restriction we have seen in case of the l attributed definition the particular node can take the value from left sibling only it cannot take the value from right sibling so here z is the right sibling of the y so that is the reason here it is being mentioned y dot s equal to a dot s and y dot s equal to x dot s are allowed but y dot s equal to z dot s violate the l attributed sg definition as attribute is inheriting the value from right sibling understood so this is not correct understood so uh, so from this point you must have understood the l attribute s attributed sgt is the subset of the l attributed sg because l attributed sgt allows both what inherited attribute also as well as the synthesize but s attributed sgt allows only the synthesize that is the reason s attributed sgt is the subset of l attributed sgt this question can be asked in the exam clarify s attributed sgt is the subset of l attributed sgt and reason for that is what s attributed sgt contains only the synthesize attribute but l attributed sgt contains both inherited attributes as well as the synthesize attributes okay now let's see the uh, one more example where you have to identify uh, the correct option here related with the sgt so this is the uh, first production we have given and second production is given related with the grammar okay now you can see here first production is what s derives mn second production m derives t now for that here semantic action and are written so s dot value equal to the m dot value plus n dot value and here also semantic action written m dot value equal to the p dot value into the q dot value and p dot value equal to the uh, q dot val understood so uh, you can see here uh, related to this select the correct option we have to select the correct option related to this okay now in case of these two things are get written you have to just identify which is the correct now you have to check option uh, point by point whether this is correct this is correct or this is or whether out of this four which one is the correct both p1 p2 are s attributed first is what both p1 and p2 are s attributed means it is been said what p1 and p2 production these both are the s attributed now we know in case of s attributed sgt here it, it must have over s attributed sgt here also the uh, l attributed sgt l attributed sgt so first option is what both p1 p2 are s attributed so let's check whether p1 is s attributed sgt or not now s attributed sgt or is what it contain only the synthesize attribute okay so p1 in case of the p1 is taking the value from m and n so it is okay p2 in case of the p2 okay uh, in case of the p2 you can
can see now p2 is not now we cannot call the p2 as a s attribute okay what is the reason behind that we can call the p1 as a s attribute whatever in case of the p2 is not called the s attribute because here p1 dot value is equal to is to be written as a q1 dot value now p is what p is the sibling of the q understood so p cannot take the value from the q okay in case of the synthesized attribute what is synthesized attribute only the parent can take the value from the child so this is this one is correct but this is not the correct understood so this option is incorrect p1 in case of b p1 is s attributed and p2 is l attributed now it is okay p1 is s attributed because s is taking the value from its child p and second thing is p2 is l attributed now let's check whether p2 is l attributed or not now here you can see uh p2 actually is not following the what we can say l attributed definition okay because p is taking the value from q okay but q is the rightmost sibling of the p so that is the reason this is also the incorrect see p1 is l attributed but p2 is not l attributed let's see can we call the p1 as a l attributed p1 is l attributed now what is the definition of l attributed l attributed attribute l attributed sdt contains what synthesized attribute as well as it can also contain the inherited attributes also the correct answer is option c reason behind that what in p1 s is a synthesized attribute yes it is correct s is a synthesized attribute and in l attribute definition synthesize is allowed so that is the reason that is the reason p1 is the l attributed but p2 is not the l attributed understood so p1 follows the l attributed definition but p2 doesn't follow the l attributed definition as p is depending on the q which is rhs to the which is rhs to it which is not correct understood so c option is the correct option related with this particular question okay so simply you have to keep in mind what is the l attributed sdt l attributed sdt is what the sdt which contain the synthesized attribute as well as inherited attribute but the inherited attribute can take the value only from the left sibling and since s attributed sdt is what that uh, sdt which contain only the synthesized attribute so according to the discussion that we have done up till according to the discussion we have done here we have written the uh, comparison between the s attributed sdt and the l attributed sdt so first difference s attribute uses only the synthesized attribute in case of the l attribute is it, it, uh, in case of the l attributed sdt it uses both inherited attribute as well as the synthesized attribute and each inherited attribute is restricted to inherit either from the parent or from the left sibling only only from the left sibling not from the right sibling so example is written here why can take the value from a why why can take the value from a why can take the value from x but why this is not correct why cannot take the value from the j second difference semantic action are placed at the rightmost end at the rightmost end of the rhs in case of what s attributed is what is the written semantic action can be semantic action or the semantic rule can be written or placed at the rightmost end of the rhs so this is the example i have written for that this is our production and semantic action are written on the rightmost side of the rhs this is our rhs and semantic action are written on the rightmost side of the rhs but in case of the l attributed sdt semantic action are placed anywhere on the rhs so in case of the l attributed sdt there is a no restriction to write the semantic action on the rightmost end of the rhs you can write the semantic action on the right hand side anywhere understood and this is the example i have written you can write the semantic action like this after e1 you can write the semantic action uh, attribute as a e1 dot value plus e2 as a e2 dot value you can write the semantic action anywhere uh, in case of the l attributed sdt you can write on the starting you can write in between or you can write at the end also 
understood you can write the semantic action anywhere on right hand side but in case of the s attribute sgt you have to write the semantic action only at the rightmost end of the rhs okay then uh, you can see last difference attributes are evaluated in the bottom of fashion in case of s attribute sgt how the attributes are get evaluated in the bottom of manner reason behind that is what the s attribute sgt only contain the synthesized attributes okay here attributes are evaluated by traversing parse tree in the depth first left to right manner means in the top down or in the pre ordered traverser traversing can be done in case of the l attributed sgt understood so this is a example uh, now for this also you can write the example like if there is a production like this a derives bc like semantic action are placed only at the right hand of the production so you have to write the semantic action here like a dot for example a dot val derives b dot val and c dot val in case of this if there is a production like this a derives bc then for that you can write the semantic action at the starting here also like it is been mentioned you can write the in between or you can write at the end so that is the reason here it is mentioned semantic action are placed anywhere on the right hand side of the production okay so that's it about the uh, the different points we have discussed today like today we have discussed different types uh, comparison between the different types of the attributes okay then we have seen the dependency graph with the example then we have seen the different types of the sdt okay and then at last we have seen the comparison of the sdt okay so i hope all of you have got this point if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section okay